home front revolution is real. It is going to come out very soon in May, I understand. May 17th, yeah. May 17th. Will Powers is here from Deep Silver, and we are going to learn all about this game. Now, this is not home front two. You were emphatically telling me before we started rolling. Yeah, it's really important to know that this is not a direct sequel. Okay. It's, uh, it's in the universe of home front. We, uh, when we acquired the IP, uh, we loved the premise of the universe. And yeah. that's something that was really strong, that really resonated with fans. Uh, when we created Homefront the Revolution, uh, we took what we loved about the universe and we made it ours. So uh, we, in the year 2029, it's a mature occupation. Uh, North Korea has taken over the U.S. and you're, uh, the game takes place in occupied Philadelphia. So you're, uh, you're playing in this mature occupation, uh, but it's different. It's not a direct sequel to, the, to Homefront 1. Um, and like some of the alternate reality. It's a, it's an alternate universe okay. with the really the same premise. I'm curious about the uh, development of this game because you know I, we heard that Crytek was involved at, at one point and then uh, Crytek now is out of the picture, but they're not really out of the picture because Crytek employees are a part of Dam Buster, which is the new studio, right? Yeah. Uh, what's, what's important to note is that there a lot of the talent that was that was working on the game, actually the majority of the talent that's working on, they're still working on the game. Mm. So there's been been the creative vision for the game uh, had no lapse uh, when uh, when we so originally we were co-published the game uh, with Crytek jointly uh, when we acquired the IP when we established Dan Buster Studio we established it with a majority talent coming from Crytek uh, UK okay. so there's That's free radical uh, that, pedigree ex right exactly right. pedigree coming from free radical so there's tons of great talent that obviously we didn't want to squander we want to utilize people that are familiar with the game uh, that are passionate about the project so what what better way to tap into existing resources there okay well one of the, the challenges that the uh, home front release had from THQ is that it squared off against a very crowded battlefield no pun intended <laughs> with EA's you know massive titles and Activision's massive titles how do you kind of navigate around that now in 2016 well it's it's difficult I mean there's there's no there's no doubt about that uh, establishing a proper release window is uh, is something that everyone struggles with whether whether you're uh, the huge AAA publishers of the world or you're the Indies you want to make sure that a game has its window to be as successful as it, as it possibly can yeah. I believe May 17th is like is a, is a pretty clear window for homefront uh, hopefully it finds success within that window and establishes itself despite Despite having a crowded window, the THQ launch of the original Homefront managed to, see, uh, to, to succeed and be, be relatively successful for what it was, the yeah. establishment of a new IP. And that's how we're treating Homefront the Revolution. It's not a direct sequel. It really is the establishment of a brand new IP. Very cool. Now, you guys are not chasing the, uh, the competitive multiplayer landscape. You're not looking to turn this into kind of a tournament game, at least right now, from what we understand. Mm -hmm. You're going in a different direction. Tell us what uh, multiplayer means Correct. for Homefront Revolution. Uh, Home from the Revolution has what we're calling resistance mode. Resistance mode is the co-op multiplayer of Homefront the Revolution. And that's really important because within the lore, within the universe of Homefront, uh, it's all about coming together and rising up. And what better way to embody that than through a cooperative multiplayer mode. And this uh, cooperative multiplayer mode, you uh, establish your own resistance cell. You and uh, up to four people come against and do these narrative-driven uh, strike-based scenarios where a small band of a resistance go against these really impossible odds of the, of the uh, North Korean army. Um, so it's it really becomes a David versus Goliath scenario yeah. where you use a lot of hit and run tactics to employ to achieve achieve moderate success and then when you uh, when you level up your character when you level up your resistance cell you can take on harder harder scenarios and you can go back and retry older ones with better equipment to take it out in different ways there's individual challenges within within each scenario uh, that are essentially unachievable when you start out but once you have the right equipment and once you have, uh, are familiar with the scenario and realize what teamwork you need to employ yeah. then all of a sudden then it, they're possible Awesome. Well, I'm very psyched to hear that there's a strong emphasis on single-player gameplay. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you think back on the Free Radical days and even before that when uh, they were rare employees and working on GoldenEye, this was a, a, a group of people that really understood how to make a lot of great content in a single-player mm -hmm. first-person shooter. Correct. And what are we talking about here for Homefront the Revolution in terms of single-player? Uh, we're talking about 
dozens and dozens of hours of actually a narrative-driven single-player experience. Mm -hmm. um, we're we're going to actually comment on the specific number of hours soon, but uh, but it's dozens of hours. It's a really fleshed out, huge open world uh, single-player experience that's all about the narrative. Um, and that carries over. That's a, that's a commitment that's carried over whether it's a single player or it's a cooperative multiplayer. Uh, that narrative driven focus is something that's, uh, that's really deeply ingrained in the fabric of this game. So the multiplayer, the cooperative uh, scenarios, those are individual narrative driven scenarios that you accomplish with a group of up to four people. Awesome. I'm also psyched to hear that the Crytek engine is what's running everything. The Crytek mm -hmm. engine is capable of some absolute gorgeous visuals. And what are we kind of looking at in this game and, and uh, what kinds of environments are we going to see? What kinds of technologies are we going to see in display? Because it is set in the future a little bit. It is running on the absolute latest version of that engine and it looks gorgeous. There's day and night cycles, especially you'll see in uh, some of these scenarios. Some are set in the day, some are set in the night. And that has an impact not only on the visuals, but on the, on the visual distance of enemies, how they, how they see you, uh, how they detect you. Uh, my favorite thing about it is the rain rain and the water effects in this game and the uh, the light refraction off those surfaces once they're wet it's just it looks amazing and I can't wait for you guys to see it very cool and weaponry I know that we're kind of playing a ragtag group of uh, people that kind of assemble themselves to fight off of a more technologically empowered army mm -hmm. do we have cool stuff at our disposal or are we just trying to steal whatever we get off of the dead fallen North Korean soldiers. Uh, you, you kind of have a, have a vulture mentality. You're scavenging as much as you can. Yeah. Uh, you'll see a lot of duct tape binding together guns. You're using whatever you can get your hands on. But as you progress in the game, as you level up your equipment, as you get better attachments and everything, you'll see that that turns from a pistol to a silence pistol to a rocket launcher to uh, this, oh God, it's, um, I forget what it's called, but it's a shotgun that you essentially put a napalm launcher on and uh, and just burn enemies to the ground. It's, am it's amazing. Um, but yeah, that's, you set them on fire and then you run up to them and slit their throat and it's a it's a thing of beauty okay all it's, right. so it's rated e for everyone obviously. oh it is of course it yeah. is and <laughs> is it uh, a game that kind of has hunter killers from the terminator on the other side as well like or are we talking cyber tech oh. and future tech coming uh, at us there's definitely future tech um it's a uh, you're Operating in the lure of this game, this is the most technologically advanced country in the entire world okay. that you're fighting against. They Which have, is an absolute joke because they are so far away from that, it's hilarious. They are in current day, but yeah. this isn't current day. We've right. re, we've rewritten the lure uh, and the uh, history of the universe uh, so that we've gone back and used an alternate past to dictate an alternate ah, future. Okay, gotcha. So in the down the line in the campaign, we will use we will go into depth about what exactly we did with the lore. Okay. But it it 100% makes sense. Okay. Um, but yeah, these guys are the most technologically advanced country in the world, employing the employing the best tech against you, a ragtag group of people using duct tape to hold together your guns. Okay, <laughs> crazy, awesome. And then in terms of uh, the characters that you play, it's all custom driven. You can come up with any kind of character creation you want, or do are we? actually embodying different personalities? So, uh, great question. Um, single player experience, you're playing as Ethan Brady, mm -hmm. who is a, the, that is a narrative different scenario uh, where you're playing as one character. The co-op experience, we're really wanting people to embody themselves. So there's a huge level of, of uh, customization in uh, cooperative multiplayer. Um, with, a lot of it's cosmetic, uh, just to have you create your, your own gender, your own, uh, your own um, character model, hairstyle, skin tone, everything that you want to make your character feel like the character you want to play. Okay. Uh, and that's that's really important. You name your character, you choose what profession they were before they decided to join the resistance, whether they were a DJ, whether they were an accountant, and each of those have little perks. Accountant gets more money at the end of missions. Uh, so there's like there's little things that uh, have different starting perks, okay. uh, but it's it's really important because we want people to feel attached to their character. We want people to become invested, and uh, that's it's really one fun way to do it. Okay, very cool. You've been transparent about uh, the fact that there are microtransactions in the game. Yes, hundred percent. There are microtransactions in the game, but what's important is that absolutely zero content in the multiplayer is set behind a pay uh, paywall. There is nothing that you cannot achieve by not playing. Uh, through the game and getting experience in in-game currency by yourself just through progression. Okay. So absolutely, there's no pay to win model, there's nothing uh, that you can buy that you can't achieve yourself without paying a cent.
It's been so hard for other shooters to make a dent in this space. Mm -hmm. You know, lots and lots have tried, and uh, you know, Homefront did gain some traction for sure. sure. But what what kind of sets this apart? What's going to get people to take their thumbs off of uh, Call of Duty or uh, Battlefield or Battlefront even right now to jump into this game and play this one? I think one thing that uh, Homefront: The Revolution accomplishes is uh, it's really fun. I mean, there's there's something to be said that uh, about just being a very fun team and squad based experience. So there's a lot of legs in this multiplayer. There's uh, there's tons of scenarios at launch. Uh, we have a commitment to doubling the amount of content at launch to a year after launch, uh, free commitment to the entire community uh, of a 12 months worth of multiplayer content that we're gonna continue to release from launch day to a year after. And to have people keep coming back for more. Um, and when people want a really fun team-based experience, uh, I, I really hope people come come and play this because it really is just that. It's a fun, fun shooter. Awesome. Well, this is a team, this Dan Buster team, with uh, uh, you know it, its history with the Time Splitters franchise and, and Perfect Dark and, mm -hmm. and even the Battlefront Three stuff that they were working <laughs> on as Free Radical. Are they champing at the bit right now to deliver on this to show what they're capable of? Is that is that something that you're getting? When you talk with the team, yeah, I think that uh, I think they've obviously gone through a lot of hardship. Whether it's uh, it's um, just change. yeah, change in ownership, and I think that they really, I feel like they have something to prove. Yeah. Uh, the new ownership, uh, essentially getting a chance to reinvent an IP. There's a lot of pride there on getting to put your name on something. I, a lot of a lot of players they they discount the credits at the end of a game, yeah. but. When you're in the credits, there's nothing cooler than seeing your name. Yeah. When uh, yeah, when it's you. It's one thing to game. work in the business, but it's another thing to finish games and ship them and have people play them. Oh, right. it's it's, yeah. it's a feeling of of pride that it, I can't even describe. Just seeing your name in the in the credits for for a game, and I think that's they're they definitely have uh, have have something to prove. There's there's something there that the Dan Buster guys. Uh, want to ship this game? They've been working on it for a long time now. Well, not necessarily on the Dan under the Dambuster moniker, but uh, but under several different monikers. <laughs> so shipping this game and having it be their creative vision. Uh, since we they're a wholly owned Deep Silver studio, we gave them full creative license to create the game that they want to create. Cool. So it's not only the pride of shipping the product; it's the pride of shipping the product that they want to ship. Awesome. Well, my fingers are crossed, and we will be looking for Homefront the Revolution in May. Thank you so much, Will. No problem. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, thanks for checking out that video on our EPN channel. It's just one small part of the things that we make around here. So if you liked it, don't forget to check out some of our other vids and hit that subscribe button.